So before we get into new material, I want to talk about what you should either already know or what you should review because uh, we're going to get into quite a bit of trig very soon and also exponential uh, functions. So I strongly recommend that you review 1.3, which is trig. I posted the 1.4 and I think they're 1.4, which is review of natural logs and exponentials in the homeworks. You probably saw that already. And is that 1.4 exponentials? 1.4 and 1.5, which are exponential, and log review. <coughs> so I didn't put any trig homework problems on web work from 1.3 because I did them in Calc 1 last quarter. But if it's been a little while since you did any serious trig, you may want to go back in 1.3 in the textbook. Uh, so for 1.3, I don't have web work homework, but you can look in the uh, book for book problems. And especially if you forgot the exponential and logarithmic rules, when if you add an exponent, it's the same as multiplying bases, but what do you do if there's multiplication in the exponent or division? And knowing all those rules is very important. So these three sections are going to uh, be important for what we're doing very soon. Like soon, like the next section is natural logs, for example. So that's how soon natural logs comes up. So that's probably the first to do is the log review. Then the exponentials go right after that. So we did the algebraic inverse properties. Let's go ahead and do some calculus on this. And we're going to look at the second one right there. So I'm going to take the derivative of the right side. Derivative of x is 1. And I want you to take derivative of the left side. What rule do you need to use? Chain, Chain rule. So go ahead and use a chain rule. Notation's a little ugly because you're going to have an f inverse prime somewhere. So this is a very inelegant notation to write the inverse derivative. Sort of looks like f to the negative 11th power. So what you shouldn't do is write primes next to exponential powers. That's not generally a good idea. So what we're going to do instead is use ddx notation. So I'll write it like this. So this is the derivative of f and of x. And I'm going to solve for the derivative of f inverse of x. So I'm going to divide out by that uh, f prime of f inverse. There is a prime. It's not directly next to the f inverse, but it's pretty close. So you may want to intentionally write your primes at slants. So it looks more like a forward slash as opposed to a 1. And this, what we just derived, is the inverse derivative uh, formula. So one way to find an inverse derivative is 
this way. So our first example problem, let f of x equal square root x. And want to find f prime of x, f inverse of x, and the derivative of f inverse of x. The easiest order, I think, to find them in is probably the order I wrote them. So take the derivative of f first, and then find the inverse. down the uh, procedure for finding the inverse. You swap x and y, and then solve for y. And you should have the inverse. Calculus questions or algebra may, may have been a few months or longer since you find an inverse of a function. So I wrote the procedure up there. Now we computed the inverse, at least I computed the inverse right off of, or computed the derivative of the inverse right off of the inverse function. There is another way to compute the inverse, which is the way that we just wrote down. So we could compute the inverse this way. So let's go ahead and do the inverse computation the way that it's written here. So f prime is 1 over 2 square root of the input, which is f inverse of x. And f inverse of x is x squared. So we'll multiply by the reciprocal. So we have 1 times 2 square root x squared is just x over 1. The 1's don't matter, and we get 2x. Now, of course, this is the same thing we got the other way. We're just seeing that we could do it either way right here. Now, this particular function, you didn't have to use this inverse formula right here. You just could get the inverse and then compute the derivative. We're going to do one more problem like this. And we'll use 
is the function x plus 3 divided by x minus 2. Now, square root of x was definitely 1 to 1. So I didn't bother checking. Let's check that this is 1 to 1 before we go and find the inverse. Now, check 1 to 1. You could graph it, but you'd have to be very careful when you graphed it that your y values were very accurate because you need to see if uh, there's any repeated y values. So graphing is not a very good way to check if something's one to one overall. We're going to use the algebraic test, which I thought I wrote down somewhere. There we go. We're going to use this. So we're going to assume that f of x1 equals f of x2 and see if we can determine that x1 and x2 are the same. So we're going to check the formula we're using. Suppose our function is g, so we're going to suppose g x1 equals g of x2, and hopefully we can determine x1 equals x2. So let's go ahead and take x1 and x2 and plug them into g. So this is x1 plus 3 over x1 minus 2 equals x2 plus 3 over x2 minus 2. How in the world are we going to get this to look like x1 equals x2? Well, the smart-ass answer is algebra, but how in the world do we go about algebraically showing this? So fractions overall suck. Let's multiply by both denominators. So both denominators are going to multiply by this. So it's going to knock out both. It's going to get us out of fraction land. So what is your algebra brain telling you to do right now? So unfortunately, none of the terms are the same here. They're similar, but if you look, the x1 term on the left has a plus 3, on the right has a minus 2. So we're not going to get to cancel in this, in this form. So what else can we do? Expand it out. I hope for the best. So let's do that. Foil it out, see what cancels out, and what you can combine. FOIL and you should be able to cancel out nicely to x1 equals x2. So we got x2 equals x1. Algebraic questions showing this a one-to-one. -one. 
So nothing, none of the steps individually are difficult, just making sure you don't make any mistakes is probably the hardest part. So we know it's one to one, so we're allowed to find the inverse now. And we'll do that next. So find the actual inverse. We're starting with y equals x plus 3 over x minus 2. Swap x and y. And to solve for y, a good first step is multiply by denominator. Get the denominator out of there. And then take a little time to see if you can isolate y. So we got our inverse, we can compute derivative, and, and the derivative of the original. So find original g prime, uh, the original function derivative. with the quotient rule.
So this computation is probably the long way around computing this derivative. The other way is going to be way shorter. Now, the computing inverse derivatives, it mostly comes down to function composition is probably the hardest part of it, composing the function correctly. There is actually two ways to do function composition. So we'll do this with, with an example. Let's take f to be the x squared function, and g, we'll keep it simple, x minus 1. So there's two ways to compute f of g of x. You could either go with the uh, plug in the inside function first, which is, I think, the way I mostly did it in pre-calculus class. So g of x, x minus 1, and we're going to take that input x minus 1 and then f it. So apply f to that, which looks like what does f do? Takes that input and squares it. So it's going to look like this, whole thing x minus 1 squared. The other way, the other order you could do it is you can actually apply the outside function first. What does the outside function do? can be a good idea to just write out the outside function with a box. So it takes box, squares it like that. So it's going to take this g of x, and it's going to square it like this. And now I just take what is g of x, x minus 1, and write in x minus 1 in place of g of x. So you can go outside in or inside out. As long as you're careful, you should get the same thing. That's all that's happening up here, except the function functions have slightly different names. One of them, the outside function is g prime, the inside function is g inverse. You just have to be very, very careful about plugging them in. So right now you should be feeling like the inverse derivative uh, formula is a little useless in the cases that we've seen. So let's do one that looks super easy. We're going to compute, compute the derivative of cos inverse x. Do you know anything about derivative of cos inverse x? You sure don't. Don't know much about it. I could draw a graph that might be a little helpful, but don't really have any idea about the derivative of cos inverse of x. However, I do know about the derivative of inverse functions in general. So let's write what I already know down here. So what I already know. So what function do we have? f inverse, our function f inverse is cos inverse of x. So our function we're dealing with is cos inverse of x. Easy question, what is regular f of x? Cos of x. Cos of x, don't use too many brain cells here, just the opposite yeah. function. What else do I need in this formula? So I need got f inverse. I don't actually directly need f. What do I really need? f prime. But in order to get f prime, I have to got, get f on the way. So what is the derivative of cosine x? Almost. Negative sine x. So that should go on your cheat sheet. Derivative of cosine has a negative. Derivative of sine is positive cosine. Of cosine is negative sine. Right? All of you are looking at me like I'm crazy. What's that? Uh, that so negative first powers mean two different things depending on how they're used. They could mean the opposite of multiplication, which is division or multiplying by reciprocal. 
but when they're on a function, they mean the opposite function or the inverse function, not generally not going to be the reciprocal function. Yes, so it's cos inverse of x, like that. And that inverse doesn't mean 1 over cos, it means the opposite function. So we, we did compute the derivative of 1 over cosine, which is uh, secant. And that was, I think, co derivative of secant is cosecant squared, I believe, somewhere on your cheat sheet. But we computed that one already, and all the regular trig functions. So we're almost ready to plug all this in. This is 1 over, and now f prime is going to eat f inverse. So I'll go inside, plug the inside one in first, which is cos inverse. So we're going to take cos inverse x and apply the f prime function. So f prime of a box is negative sine of the box. So it's going to be negative sine of cos inverse of x. We're almost there. This is technically the anti or the technically the derivative of the inverse. But what did we do in trig class when we got sine of cosine inverse? We simplified it using some trig. So let's go ahead and simplify it. The, generally, the easiest way is draw a triangle and use Sokotoa. So this is a trig problem. You can simplify any time there's a trig and a trig inverse function composed or the other way around, trig inverse of trig. You can simplify. So on the inside, we're going to let theta equal cos inverse x. <coughs> so cos theta equals x. And we can write it as x over 1. And we're going to use adjacent over hypotenuse. So we're drawing a triangle, theta. There's our right angle, and adjacent is 1 hypotenuse. No, adjacent's x hypotenuse is 1. So the y side right here is going to be, I can use y temporarily. So x squared plus y squared equals 1 squared. y equals plus or minus square root 1 minus x squared. And we always go positive when we do these. So the inside part we call theta. So the sine of cos inverse x is now sine theta. And sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. which is square root 1 minus x squared over 1. And take the reciprocal of the denominator. And that expression is the derivative of cosine inverse. There was no other way to compute that inverse derivative. Because I don't know what the derivative of, before I did this, I didn't know the derivative of cos inverse. So I could not directly compute it. There's no way to do so. So there are functions who you may know their inverse, but have no way of getting to the derivative. So you use this way. And it sort of sidesteps it. As long as you know the inverse function and the regular function's derivative, you can use this formula. So I took the reciprocal of the denominator. So I just flipped it over. There is five other trig functions 
that you can do the same thing with. And it works out in a very similar way. We'll do a few more of them. But this is very good practice, so I'm going to write down for homework. Derivative of sine inverse and tangent inverse. And tangent inverse gets a little strange because the derivative of tangent secant squared, so you have to be a little careful with your, you'll have a square in there. 